Hello, Tony. Hello. Welcome to Star Test, the computer interview. It's just the two of us here, but viewers will be phoning in during the show to vote on whether or not you are telling the truth. If they believe you, there will be the chance to show your chosen clip. If not, a mystery forfeit will appear in its place. So please, Try to answer my questions honestly. Here are nine categories of questions. Please select a category by simply touching the screen. Uh, before and after, please. Please choose any number. One. What nicknames have you got? Oh, none that I'm aware of. I think at... Uh School, they used to call me toenail because it began with a T. Six. What do you consider to be your purpose in life? My purpose in life? Ooh, that's a heavy one. Um, two. What do you predict for the 90s? Oh, that was interesting, wasn't it? Because I didn't mean two, I meant T-O, and I was going to go two, two. I'll answer that one first. Um, to spread universal peace and happiness and to leave the world a better place than it would have been had I not been here. I suppose anyone would say that. Uh, something about the 90s, you asked there. I'm going to go on for that. I'd say, for people in their 90s, a progressively degenerative sex life. Um, but accompanying that, a sense of warm companionship and general peace. 13. How would you describe your favourite childhood toy? I'm going to get up for this, if you don't mind. Um, my favourite childhood toy... Uh, that wasn't rehearsed, by the way. I'm just getting up because I'm feeling a bit sweaty. And that's because I don't have any box shorts on. Perhaps that's a good idea for wearing box shorts, of course. I need to absorb some of the sweat, possibly. The reason I don't wear underwear is because I used to do judo a lot. Sorry, a different question, but I'll come on to a question in a moment. Um, and, and, um, and they always used to say, no, don't wear, don't wear anything, because it just uh, makes you hot and sweaty and you get fungal infections and all that sort of thing. And that's kind of stayed with me. And I like the freedom it gives me. Uh, Favourite childhood toy? Well, it wasn't really a toy. What I used to do, and a, a lot of um, people might say that this was uh, evidence of uh, an unhappy childhood. I had a gloriously happy childhood. I used to make a toy, in fact. I used to make a companion. I used to get a spare pair of pyjamas and stuff it with rags and then put a cricket ball in a sock for its head and so I'd have a, a companion whom I used to call Fred. Now, part of that was so I could practice my judo throws on him. And part of it was so I could pretend I was in The Man From U.N.C.L.E. and uh, beat him up. So in a way, that was my uh, favourite childhood toy. Uh, three. Did you have a worst subject at school? My worst subject? Ah, my worst I'm going to sit back down for this, excuse me. That's better, less sweaty now. Uh, I suppose my worst subject... Well, I failed two O-levels, because I didn't, I didn't do any work for them at all. I failed Latin very badly, uh, because I mistranslated something idiotically. I think it was the word barbie, which I think is barbarians, isn't it? And I think the barbarians in this particular text were, were throwing flaming firebrands at a building. But I thought it meant their beards were on fire. And so I had lots of barbarians <laughs> running out of this room with their beers on fire. So that was one. And the second O-level uh, I failed was geography. A lot of people might say that's um, 
That's a good thing to fail geography. And I think there was a report sent to the school, I think, because they thought I was taking the piss, but I wasn't. And I started, it was, the, it was an essay on, on the Dutch polder lands, where they reclaim the land from the sea. And I think I started my essay, Hello and Welcome to Holland. And I really wasn't trying to take the mickey. I think it was Hello and Welcome to Holland, land of cheeses, dikes, and windmills, in which the Dutch fight their never-ending but courageous battle against the encroaching sea. Because I didn't know anything about uh, the Polderlands, but I thought I just might make it interesting. I might have seen Judith Chalmers on the television as well. So I suppose they, those were my worst subjects. <laughs> The, uh, no, don't talk to me like that. I'm it's nervous. Over. Listen, look, look, look. Oh, where's your sunglasses gone? I've lost them. I've lost them. They fell out of the window. Did you see that? They had a big wire on it. <laughs> don't, don't shift the gears. I know what I'm doing. Fourth gear. Fourth gear. For third, third gear. Third gear. Fourth gear. Third gear. Oh, oh, oh. oh I thought you drive the car, then. It's not my car. It's not my car. It's not my Right, I'll park here. Right. Now, please select a new category. Uh, Honour and justice, please. Please choose any number. 14. Which laws would you choose to change? I'd like there to be a law which prevented people eating very loudly or talking. 11. Do you ever use the fact that you have a black belt in judo as a threat? Oh, God, no. Certainly not. No, I'm uh, reasonably uh, peaceable and passive uh, chap like that. No, I could think of nothing crasser, and I don't think I've ever done it because I was taught it rather well, and it was never taught in that macho, um, Eastern, uh, preemptively aggressive martial arts way. It's, uh, it's the gentle art, the art of breaking your opponent's balance while retaining your own within very strict um, sporting... Uh, environments and rules, so no. Ten. To what extent do you judge people on first meeting? Um, to, to a greater or lesser extent, depending on the impact they, they have on me. Um, one's been proved very badly wrong, in, in the past, but equally, sometimes the first ten seconds can tell you all you need to know. Seven. What have you ever stolen? Oh, cheeky. I've stolen a 1940s telephone from a film studio somewhere, but I'm sure no one needed it, and it was just hanging about covered in dust, and I lovingly restored it, then gave it away to someone as a gift. So, in fact, I gave that telephone a home. So there, 13. How good a liar are you? I'd say... It depends what I'm trying to protect, really. I suppose I lie in... in, um, in the same circumstances as most people, either to save my own skin or to... Um, save someone else's feelings. I think I'm probably disturbingly good sometimes. Now, please select a new category. Um, all right, I'll go for love and passion. Please choose any number. One. How did you feel when you last fell in love? Oh, when I last fell in love. I suppose you have to um, differentiate between falling in love and having a crush or infatuation, and often uh, I can't tell the difference. I'm not sure many people can. I think it's an uncomfortable feeling because you're out of control, and when you're out of control, people can uh, take advantage of you. Of course, that's, uh, that's backed up by uh, feelings of um, happiness and um, abandon as well. Um, so I'd say, I'd say a mixture, a mixture of joy and despair. After all, that is love, isn't it? Pompous old crap. Um, six. What do you fantasize about? <laughs> what do I fantasize about? You cheeky thing. Um, I suppose you mean sexual fantasies. Um, often it's like, uh, often it's not one specific thing. It's more of a, um, a Dadaist nightmare, a surreal flight of fantasy, which often, uh, the details of which, of course, when one 
uh, wakes up, especially if they're, if they're night dreams, um, one, one's forgotten about. So it's not one particular thing. So I, I wouldn't be able to, to say something like, I don't know, uh, I wouldn't be able to give a particular person or a particular situation. It's often um, a tapestry of, uh, of, of various elements, most of which possibly couldn't be included in a family show like this one. 14. How large is your sexual appetite? How large is my sexual appetite? Um, it varies. I don't know whether it's to do with biorhythms or general happiness. The longest I was celibate was for two years, and uh, I regard that as one of my happiest times. Seven. How did you tackle the filming of a bed scene with Georgina Hale? <laughs> Who did your research, you naughty thing? How did I tackle it? Well, it was difficult. I think Georgina is a very good and intriguing and unusual and rather eccentric actress, but she didn't actually talk to me until we hit the sack in the bed scene. And uh, um, she turned to me suddenly and said, hello, Tony, you are Tony, aren't you? I'm not going to do this as the usual um, post-coital propped up, because uh, it was a post-coital, you know, we'd just done it, allegedly, and I was her Spanish lover, Luis. And she said, no, we're not going to smoke cigarettes or anything like that. It's boring, darling. I'm going to play the entire scene under the, uh, under the blankets, just moving around. And also, they had to make up my bum, because I'm a kind of pasty Anglo-Irish white colour, and I had to look uh, Mediterranean. And I don't like having my bum made up. Um, it's, not, it's not very digni dignified. What do you want from me, Alison? I pay for you to come on this trip. You paid for me to carry that case full of money from Barcelona to England. But you offer. Because I didn't want you to get arrested. It will be safer that way. I wish you stopped treating me like a kid. <gasps> Twelve. Which emotions do you find most difficult to display? Most difficult to display? Um, probably all emotions, really, I mean, in, in that I'm not, um, as it were, an emotionally profligate person. They, it's, it's not that I'm, I'm wound up about them, it's just I think sometimes they can be devalued by, uh, by displaying them too often, perhaps in a slightly American way, where everything is, uh, nothing is, is subjugated, everything is, 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 is up front. Maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, but it's, it's not... Uh, for me, the emotions I hate displaying are sarcasm and uh, jealousy, and I try to, I try to keep a, a bridle on those. Eight. Would you like to have an affair with yourself? <laughs> an affair with yourself. <laughs> Would I like to have an affair with myself? Ooh, we are getting into to Freudian or perhaps Jungian areas here. Um, no, because I'd only let myself down and be useless in bed, probably, and not do the washing up. Now, please select a new category. Um, inside and out, please. How much do you like looking at yourself in... So, I suppose... Uh, I suppose there's a thing about um, the semantic question of like. Do I find it pleasurable? No. Do I do it a lot? Uh, and I suppose in a way I'm, I'm, I'm quite vain. I suppose actors have to be vain. But I don't find it pleasurable, but I do find myself doing it a lot. Just to check for, for zits and grey hairs and all that. Eleven. Oh, sorry, I cracked my fingers. What is the most radical step you've taken to change your appearance? <laughs> The most radical step I've taken to change my appearance. There was once a period, I think in about 1983, when I went to... I, I wasn't getting any work and I was feeling a bit, uh, I think, down, down the press. They, 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 they do try and change their appearance somehow. So I went to a local... Uh, a local hairdresser's, I think, some, something called Champagne or something, spelt with a C-H or a T at the end, I don't know. And I went in and said, oh, just uh, do something interesting. It was kind of clustered around me, and I was obviously a kind of guinea pig for them. And after much hooing and hawing and poking, they said, I know, we'll give you burgundy lowlights. And I didn't know what lowlights or burgundy lowlights were or anything like that, so I said, yeah, right. And I was there for ages and ages, and they put foil on my hair, hair and everything. Um, and when they took it off, some three and a half hours later, my hair was carrot-coloured. 
It was the colour of a carrot. And I went home, and I dropped in at my mum and dad's, and opened the door. My mum fainted. Don't know why, she thought I'd been in some kind of accident or something like that. Back upstairs and dyed it black. Back to black. I suppose that's the most radical thing. Never again. Don't tamper with nature. Where do you draw the line in interviews? Draw the line? Oh, it depends what sort of questions they ask. Uh, if they're questions, as it were, about one's sex life, or lack of it, I'm, uh, I'm quite old-fashioned in, in that I think what I do with my <coughs> is nobody's business except mine. Three. What image do you deliberately cultivate? Hand on heart, I don't think I do try and cultivate an image. I'm pretty much myself, I think. I suppose I'm at pains to, to come over as a reasonably affable bloke. Ten. What were your first thoughts on waking up this morning? Uh, my first thought, whether it was a good idea. How many pairs of boxer shorts do you have? One. Who's your favourite film director? I think I'd have to go for Sergio Leone, I think. Is he dead? Possibly. But I enjoyed his films. What colour are your swimming trunks? Black. Which is your favourite city? Edinburgh. What car do you drive? I don't drive a car. I've got half a mop. I used to drive, which was my first car, 180B SS Sports Coupe Datsun in Blizzard White. But it, it was only £200, and that's why I bought it. What's your favourite sport? Uh, my favourite sport to watch is gymnastics. Uh, to... Where did you last go on holiday? Where did I last go on holiday? I think it was um, Austria in about 1983. Which is your favourite band? My favourite band? Everything but the girl. How many leprechauns have you seen? I'm sorry, are you on drugs? select a new category. Ooh, um, sweet and sour, please. Please choose any number. Ten. Feature. Oh, God, that's for other people to say. <laughs> Clothes can hide a multitude of sins. Uh, I don't like... I've always been a bit worried about my teeth. I was one of a generation of 50s babies whose mothers, when they were pregnant with me, were prescribed an antibiotic called tetracycline. It was later discovered that tetracycline deposits in the uh, teeth of the uh, fetus or in the genes of the fetus which, which go up to make their teeth or whatever and it makes them rather brittle and discoloured. So I'd love to have spanking white teeth. I suppose one, one can. Lots of American people do it, don't they? They have, um, what are they called? Um, things, caps and all that. Uh, oh, and I haven't got a hairline at the back of my neck. It's like a sort of relief map of Addis Ababa and I'd like to have a nice straight line at the back of my neck. Uh, Twelve. What is the worst name someone has called you to your face? To my face? Um, I, can't, I can't remember that. I had a threatening message the other day after I'd just done a charity gig. Someone left a message on my aunt's phone saying, you're going to die, you mother... <laughs> that could easily have been Esther Ranson or British Telecom or the Samaritans, I don't know. But I thought it was... a a bit strong. Can't remember um, any, any personal abuse. Or maybe, maybe I've just deliberately erased that. Thirteen. Who is your best friend? I don't have a best friend. I have a group of uh, friends, mostly outside show business, whom I've had... 
since sort of university or, or school whom I, whom I would regard as, as my best friends. I won't give any names because they won't mean anything to anyone. And even if they did, I wouldn't because that's private. 14. Reveal a secret about Josie Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't really know um, Josie that well. Um, I think it'd be a bit naughty if I did know any secrets about her. Oh, except, except that uh, I did want to visit her flat, not the one she's in now, and it was sort of done up entirely in, uh, as a sort of nightmarish pastiche of, um, of, of 50s bad furniture, almost like a, uh, a strange version of, of, of an early episode of Bewitched. So that took me back a bit. I hope I'm not giving anything away, Josie. Three. Does your endless enthusiasm ever get on your own nerves? <laughs> Who said I was endlessly enthusiastic? I'm not at all. That, that sounds a bit like Jeremy Beadle. I don't think I am endlessly enthusiastic. Often I think I, I'm, especially sort of over, over the past few years, if programme projects come up or anything like that, I, I, I often sound a note of slightly wary pessimism. Seven. If you were a bug, where would you plant yourself? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you meant some kind of little cockroach or something. Where would I plant myself? Ooh, heavens above. Of course, one's tempted to say, in the phone of people you regard as your closest friends, so you can hear their conversations and hear what they really speak of you. What question are you glad you weren't asked? Are there any disadvantages in not wearing underwear? How would you have answered? <laughs> um, not that I can think of. Who would you like to see in the star test chair? Who would I like to see in the star test chair? Whoever this voice belongs to. You are now invited to select five characteristics from the on-screen menu, which you feel best illustrate your personality. Oh, God. Um, paranoid. Shy. Approachable. Generous. Possessive. The phone poll results show that the viewers do not believe all that you have been saying. Damn. The way he tries to swallow his own foot. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Oh, that'll be oh, Charlie. Oh, no, I have come in the pet doth await me. Here I am, my galvanized bucket, my foot freshly out of my mouth. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Please keep quiet. We're waiting for the train. Man, hold this. Keep and step and step and make it. Burn it, step and burn it. Move it. Yes. Oh, and out. Oh, and out. And there we go. Charlie, have you met Tony? <laughs> Excuse me. Bye-bye. <laughs>